it's a bit of a confusing uh, word because it has so many definitions. There are so many definitions of religion. You know, I used to have this idea that religion is just defined as, you know, those who just serve God or worship a God or many gods. Religious people are those who just believe in a God or many gods. <laughs> The word religion, um, it comes from the Latin word, which is um, religio. It means to bind. It means a non number of things, but it usually refers to um, basically acts or duties, you know, that people uh, did for the gods. Like sacrificing to the gods, things like ceremonies, things like offerings. The word religion comes from the Latin word religio, which refers to, I just read it here. The socially acceptable cultic duties that people did for the gods, like sacrificing at a state-funded temple. So religion, that was back then in the ancient times. That's what religion was defined as, you know, what you did for the gods, serving the gods. But nowadays, religion is not limited to that. Religion is not limited to only belief in a god. It's much more wider than that. Because take, for instance, Buddhism, it's considered to be one of the world religions. But yet they don't believe in a God. They don't have faith in a God. They separate themselves from this idea of you know worshiping a God, serving a God. So the word religion <laughs> is not only uh, restricted, does not only refer to I'm um, believing in a God. And that's why a lot of people would say, you know, they say I'm not religious or the agnostics, they say I'm not a rich religious, I don't want to be a religious, I don't have to into religion because they have this idea that you no know, religion is just only related to serving a god or serving many gods. So that's why a lot of people's concepts and ideas of religion are. Again, I want you to write these statements down and I'm gonna try and explain, elaborate on them because they are very important. It's about religion. Our religion if you can please write this down, it's very important. Religion is man's attempt to find meaning in life. Religion is man's attempt to find meaning in life. One of the reasons why man decided, or we could say, is decided to be religious or create religions, so many religions, they're trying to find meaning in life. Religion is man's attempt to find meaning in this life. A religion is man's attempt to understand and to answer questions relating to uh, the creation of the world. In other words, why the world exists. Religion is a, is a, result, is a result of man's attempt to understand and to answer questions relating to the creation of the world. Are human beings placed in the world? In other words, why are we here? Religious men's attempt to answer the question of why are we here? And why does the world exist? <clears throat> in life after death. Men's attempt to answer the question of what happens when we die. Where do we end up? Again, a lot of people have different ideas of what happens when you die. For instance, in, we could say Buddhism, the idea is you reincarnate. So you come back as something else. You could say you're paying for your previous life. If you were, I don't know, a human and maybe you didn't live a good life, you might reincarnate as a rat, something like that. That's, that's just the philosophy. That is the philosophy. So that's what the, the idea is of what happens after you die, life after death. You might reincarnate maybe as a rat, as a horse, or maybe as, I don't know, something else. That's their philosophy. So religion is man's attempt to answer the question of what happens after we die. Man is seeking to answer these questions. Again, religion, please write this down, is man's basically search for a supreme being whom you could identify as God, nature, or a number of things. It's man's attempt, uh, religion is man's attempt to find, sorry, yeah, religion is man's search 
for a supreme being who may be identified as God, divinity, or something else. A man by the name of William James explained that this divine refers to things like God, nature, or many other things. And again, religion, as I said, I'm going to explain all this. Religion is man's attempt to find a means of having an intimate relationship with this supreme being. So they're seeking, they're searching for this supreme being, and they're attempting, making an attempt to, you know, have an intimate relationship with this supreme being, with this supreme being who may be considered as God or nature. Some people believe in nature, believe it or not. Some people believe in nature. They think nature is God. You know, the world is God, the earth, all that stuff. Some people have these ideas. Everyone has different philosophies, different ideas. So in most religions, man attempts to reach up to their God or their gods, to this supreme being, and to please this supreme being through various acts such as rituals, offerings, sacrifices, and ceremonies. So man is attempting to reach up to this God. Man is attempting to make, seek this God. They want to seek this God. And to please this God or supreme being through things like rituals, ceremonies, offerings, sacrifices. Now let's talk about man's search for this supreme being. Remember I say that you are not a religious Christian. I'm explaining something here. You are not a religious Christian. Religion is man's search for a supreme being. They're searching to, seeking rather to, uh, religion, you can write this out, it's, it's summed up, you could say, in two words, to seek, or uh, one word which is to search. It's summed up in two words. There's so many definitions of it, but if you want to sum it up, it's just to search, or uh, seek. Talking about man's search for this supreme being, the thing about searching is you cannot search for something until you either had it or unless it exists. You can't be like, I want to search for my iPhone 2 million. That's the name of your iPhone. You can't be like, I want to search for my iPhone 2 million. I lost it. When that iPhone doesn't even exist, it makes no sense. When you either not have, you never had it, you can't search for something until you either had it or until this thing that you're searching for exists. It's said that when children usually, when they're growing up, they have, you could say, an idea or concept of that the world has been designed in a certain way that there's a purpose for the world. It says that children usually, when they grow up, they have this idea that there's a specific purpose for this world that we're living in, and that it must have been created by something or by someone. The world that we live in is created by someone or something. That's what people say kids when they're very little, when they're growing up. And the thing with that is their ideas and their concepts of whom this person or thing that created the world is, is usually you know, impacted and influenced by you know, their culture. For instance, if you grew up in a, a Buddhist family, you'd be told like, no, nothing made this world. If you grew up in a Christian family, you'd be told that, oh, God himself created this world. So kids, they have this idea of that this world actually has a purpose. And there's a design, there's a creator of this world that we're living in. But their ideas of that is impacted and influenced by the culture at times. Sometimes impacted and influenced by the culture. So they have different ideas. Their parents might tell them something else. So man, being little, as children, have this idea that there's a creator. You know, we are seeking to have this relationship in many religions to have a relationship with this creator. Remember, you can't seek or search for something until you had it. And that goes back, we could say, to our back in our relationship in the Garden of Eden with God, we had a perfect relationship with him. We had a perfect relationship with this, our creator. But being separated from our creator, having lost that connection and intimate relationship with our creator, 
with Cosmo who could say, this might have led to why man is now searching or seeking to be in a relationship with this supreme being that we believe in. Man is searching, seeking to be in a relationship with a supreme being because they have this idea that there must be a creator because you can't search for something or look for something until it exists. For instance, the reason why you might say you feel hungry is because something such as food exists. You have the desire, oh, I'm really hungry right now. I'm craving, and you're hungry, why? Because food exists. Oh, a baby duck, a duckling, the reason why it, you know, it wants to swim is because something such as water exists. So man is searching for this supreme being because this supreme being exists because they might have had a relationship with this supreme being before. You can't search for something until you had it. <laughs> and man is searching for this supreme being and they're looking, designed to please this supreme being so that this supreme being can meet their needs and their desires. In ancient times, it was believed that people had many gods, millions of gods. People believed in so many gods, and their idea was that there was no one single god that could, you know, meet all their needs. So they had a god for everything, believe it or not. They had a god for everything. Because they're like, you know, I get hungry, I need clothes, I need water, I need food, I need all these things. And they're like, we have to believe in so many gods for these gods to be able to supply and provide for all our needs. So people had so many, you know, they believed in so many gods. When someone's like has a heartbreak or you know relationship breakup, you know they'll seek the God of love, so this God could you know comfort them. Or when they're going to war, you know to battle, combat, they will seek the God of love, right? so this God can give them victory. So men would seek these gods, and they'll try to please these gods, so these gods can help meet their needs. It's also believed that you know the, the gods, you know, their idea was that in the Mesopotamia, yeah, that's the, that's where. In their religious concept, that these gods created men so that men could be their co workers, so that men could work with them, you know, to fight against what they called, you know, the forces of evil. That's, that's, or chaos, yeah, that's the word. They had this idea that man was created so that they could fight alongside the gods to defeat chaos. And man was created for that. And their idea was that gods, you know, they lived amongst men. You know, they lived in houses built by men, what you may call shrines. And these gods, if men, men had to please them, men had to work with these gods in order for these, and as men, you know, please the gods, the god will also meet their needs. The god will also su supply for them. So religion is basically men's search to be in relationship with the supreme being, and men's search, you know, to please this supreme being. The thing about it is, you see, as believers, remember you can't seek for something if you have it. If you have something, you can't search for it, right? For sure. If I have this my iPad, I'm not going to be like, oh, I'm going to look looking for my iPad. That makes no sense. It's already here. <laughs> if you have something, you don't go seeking for it. Religion is men's attempt, men's search for a supreme being, or a creator of something, and to please this supreme being. You see, the thing with us is, we have the supreme being. Mm, 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 mm. That's right. That's right. <laughs> the problem with us believers, the problem with us, the church, is, you know, we're doing what religious people do. We are attempting to seek this God and to please this God through various religious acts, through various uh, offerings. <sighs> we searching, we, we, we try to please God through various things that we do with our own strength, that we do with our own might, that we do with our own efforts. But the thing is, you don't need to do that. For instance, uh, let's say in the Catholic Church, you know, we have this idea, I'll say we because we're all believers, that there's what you may call a seven uh, sacraments. Seven sacraments, that's like baptism, that's like uh, laying on of hands, that's like penance, 
That's like confirmation, the Eucharist, marriage, there's so many of these. And they're like, we need to go through all these seven sacraments. If you can't go through all these sacraments, seven sacraments, you can't be involved in the church. If you don't go through all these seven sacraments, you can't have a relationship with God. So you must have all these impenances, like, you know, confessing your sins to uh, a preacher, a pastor, something like that. So in order for you to, and the idea is that if you want to receive grace from God, you have to go through all these things. <sighs> if you want more grace to be able to live a faithful life, you have to go through all these things. So we attempting to receive grace from God through all of these things, through all these list of things. Confession, for instance, if you do something wrong, you know, you have to tell like the person, or I did something wrong, and then the person will be like, okay, you're forgiven, don't go and sin anymore. And a lot of people do that. But the problem, that doesn't really solve the problem. Because anyone just go there for the experience. You murder someone and I'm like, oh, I did something. But anyone will do that because why? It's not, sometimes it's not even from your heart. So you can be like, oh, preacher, I did something bad. And then they, you're like, oh, your sins are forgiven. And you're like, oh, yes, my sins are forgiven. And then you continue your whole life. <laughs> the thing about confession is, it's simply defined as uh, to agree or to acknowledge. You don't need to go to someone and tell him, oh, I did this, or oh, I did that. Because to confess simply to agree, if I'm confessing to, let's say, Michael, or if I'm confessing to God, rather, it's simply you agree to the fact that you have done something wrong. And that you know that God is, <laughs> God, you're telling God, God, I did this, what I did is wrong, and you're agreeing with God because God already knows what you did is wrong. So you don't have to tell anyone else. It's you acknowledging, basically acknowledging your sins. That's you confessing to God. God, I did wrong. What I did, I know is not right. That's, that's you confessing your sins to God. So you don't have to go through all these things to please God, not to receive grace from God. Yeah, of course. <laughs> Religion is man's attempt to search for a God or a being or something and to try and please that being. When we didn't have a relationship with God before, we could say we were religious because we we're seeking for this God. We we're religious because we we're searching to please this God. But now we have a relationship with this God. We don't need to go searching for him anymore. If you have a relationship with God, if you have God in your life, if you accepted Christ as your Lord and as your personal Savior, you don't need to go searching for Him anymore. Men's attempt to search for a God through different things, religion, rituals, offerings, sacrifices. You don't need to go through all that process anymore. Because why? The thing that you, other people are searching for, you already have it. You are not a religious Christian, so stop. <laughs> People are like, oh, I didn't go to church last week. You know, and I have to go to church, you know, so God can be happy with, with me. So, you know, God can be pleased with me. That's you trying to please God with your own effort. That's what religious people are trying to do. They're trying to please their gods. <laughs> I, was, <laughs> I was in my studies and I discovered something very profound. Like, something like in Hindu, they have like three, three or 33 million gods. 33 million gods. <laughs> I was shocked when I found that out. 33 million gods. I was like, wow! I'm amazed. And the idea is that these 33 million gods, you know, the one big god, I don't know, the, I forgot the name of the god, he created, or what you may call, I think demigod or something like that. And he put all these gods in different places to, you know, govern and to manage these sections of the world. So there's a god for the sea, there's a God for um, the wind. There's a God for the earth shit. There's a God for basically everything in life. And so the thing is, if you really, <laughs> this is an idea. If you want to please the gods, if you want a job, or if you want most of your dreams to be fulfilled, the idea is that, you know, just seek this God on Monday. If you really want your dreams to be fulfilled on Monday, just go and seek this God, pray to this God on Monday. And you're guaranteed that your dreams will be fulfilled. And when you do that, you know, offer him milk, milk and honey. Mm. And when you do that, you're trying to please the God now through your various acts and rituals and all that stuff. And you have to offer him milk and honey. And when you do that, do you know what happens? You know, 
you won't experience any problems in, let's say, a relationship or in your jobs. All those problems are going to be dealt away with. Only if you just, you know, just, you have to, first you have to you actually have to bathe, then you have to offer honey, then you have to offer milk, you have to offer all these things. So it's man, religion is man's attempt to seek for this God and to please this God. If you don't do this, so it's like, so if I don't pray to this God on Monday, if I don't worship him on Monday, does that mean I'm not going to get it? my dreams, I'm not going to be fulfilled? Is that what it means? Is, is, that's the question. Does that mean your dreams aren't going to be fulfilled if you don't serve this God on Monday? <laughs> With us believers, we don't need to go through that process. <laughs> we don't need to go through that process. God is not like, that's what the Bible says, um, things like, <laughs> Seek first the kingdom of God. Yeah. Matthew chapter 3 verse, sorry, 6, 6 verse 33. Seek first the kingdom of God and his righteousness. And all these things will be added unto you. You want your dreams to be fulfilled? It's in a relationship with God in his kingdom. You want a good job? <laughs> in his kingdom. You want all these things? In his kingdom. So religion is man's basically, it's basically sorry, man's attempt to please God. And when you when we didn't have a relationship with God, we, we were religious, but now we have a relationship with Him, we stop being religious. We start seeking, we stop seeking for God. Because we already have God. We don't need to go searching anymore. Many religions want to please God, but we don't have to do that. Let's take a scripture. I, was, I forgot to mention this earlier. <laughs> Hebrews chapter 6, 11 verse 6, sorry. I forgot to mention this earlier. <laughs> Hebrews chapter 11, verse 6. You there? Please let me know. Hebrews chapter 11, verse 6. Can I explain something here? So, religion is basically meant as. One of the uh, definitions of, we could say, of religion, man's attempt to search for a supreme being or divine or something like that and to try and please that being. Hebrews chapter 11 verse 6. It's also man's attempt to, you know, understand. <coughs> if you there, please let me know. Yeah. Okay, and I'll actually read. Uh, it states, Hebrews chapter 11 verse 6, yeah? And without faith, it is impossible to please him, that is God. For he who comes to God must believe that he is, and that he is a rewarder of those who seek him. <sighs> without faith, it's impossible to please him, please God. For he who comes to God must believe that he is, and that he is a rewarder of those who seek him. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Amen. Thank you, Father. Uh, please write this down. I'm going to explain. The word faith, it's to trust. Without, let's put another, without, it's to trust in God. It refers to, to obey in this context. <laughs> It's to trust in God, it's to obey without faith, without trust, without obedience. Hope, hope someone's writing that down. <laughs> without relying on God, in this context we could say it's trust, it's obedience, it's to rely on God. Without relying on, it's impossible <laughs> to please Him. I'll write this word down, the word please. Uh, it means to be fully agreeable. To be fully agreeable. It's acceptable. The word please means fully agreeable. It's to accept. It's to reason. <laughs> the word please is also, we could say, <clears throat> a pleasure or something like that. And pleasure means, I would say, accomplish, to fulfill, to perform. To accomplish is to fulfill, to perform, or to carry out an undertaking task. 
It's to complete. <laughs> Thank you, Jesus. Now let me explain what I just, let me just put everything in order now. The Bible says, and without faith, it's impossible to please him. For he who comes to God must believe that he, he is, and that he is a rewarder of those who seek him. Remember, in religion, people are trying to please this God. They're gods. 3,000 of them, 3 million of them, whatever. They're trying to please their 3 million gods, or their one God, or whatever. People are trying to please their gods through rituals, through things like sacrifices, through things like ceremonies, through offerings, in different many ways. But this our almighty creator, he's so awesome. He's like, do you really want to please me? Without having to go through the rituals? Without having to go through the ceremonies? Without having to go through all these things? Simply have faith. Trust in him. Obey him. Rely on him. Oh God. Without trusting in him, without obeying him, without relying on him, you cannot please him. In other words, you cannot agree with the fact that God is whom he says he is. You can't see him. You can't touch him. Some people are like, I want to, oh, I want to, your God is real, then I want to touch him. If your God is so real, then I want to speak to him. Some people, when they pray, oh, God, speak to me in the wedding. Two years later, God, please speak to me. Three years later, God, please speak to me. <laughs> God speaks to us in different ways. <laughs> Some dreams, some scriptures, different ways. So people want God to physically come down and talk to them. <coughs> Without faith, it's impossible to it's impossible to agree with God. It's impossible to reason with God with the idea that this God actually is real. This is one thing that the true Moses and the children of Israel really struggled with. <laughs> Without faith, it's impossible to please it. They could not please God. They could not reason with God that this God that Moses was telling them was real because they didn't have faith. They didn't trust Moses that this God that they were serving was real. They didn't trust that what God was, Moses was telling them about God was actually going to come to pass. That's why they couldn't please him. That's why they couldn't reason with God. That's why God would always, you know, okay, he gave us bread, he gave us manna, and now the next thing you know, they're crying for something else. Oh, now we're starving Moses. God, this God to do something. Oh, now we're hungry, Moses. We need water. We need meat. They could not please God because they did not rely on God. And remember, the word please also refers to fulfill. And because they didn't trust him, God could not fulfill his promises in most of the Israelites' lives. That's why most of the old ones died. God could not fulfill his promise in their lives. Most of them died in, 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 in the wilderness. Why? They couldn't please him. Because like, if you want to please me, stop seeking, stop doing all these things. Just have trust, have faith. Have, obey my words, obey me. That's how you'll please me. That's how you're going to reason with me. And he's a rewarder of those who diligently seek him. In other words, when you have trust in him, and, and you agree to the fact that he exists, the Bible says, <laughs> the secrets of the Lord is with those that fear him. He chooses whom he'll reveal himself to. God, you never know, God might reveal himself to you. He reveals his attributes to you, reveals his characteristics to you. He starts teaching, revealing to you that the fact that he's actually real. Mm. But it all starts with faith. So you're not a religious Christian. Why you stop seeking? God could not fulfill his promises in the life because of no trust, no faith. How many of us, <laughs> God has been struggling, he wants to do something in our lives, he wants to make new changes, he wants to use us, work with us and through us to impact to influence our world, our generations, our family, our friends. But where's the trust? God can't fulfill his purpose in your life. He can't fulfill his will in your life if you don't trust him. God doesn't force people, by the way. The Holy Spirit is very gentle. He don't force you. He's not going to be like, okay, Brother Michael, get that RPG, put it on his head. He, got to, he, he has to serve me. God's not going to put a gun on your head. Take Adam. Did he stop Adam eating the fruit? Adam and Eve? No. <laughs> he falls, then he could have, God could have saved us a whole lot of trouble, you know, right? He could have saved us so much problem. But why did he do that? He's not going to fall. Without faith, without 
trust, you can't please him. Religious people are trying to please their gods. You, you stop being religious. The Bible says the kingdom of God is like, let's go there please. I'm about, I'm, about, uh, I'm about to end soon. Matthews chapter 13, verse, I think 46. Lord help us. Uh, chapter 13, verse 46. I hope I'm really making sense. It's sharp. <laughs> Matthews chapter 13, verse 46. I pray that's the right verse. It's about kingdom of God. It's like a merchant. Again, the kingdom of heaven is like unto a merchant man seeking godly pearls. Who, when he found one, one pearl of great price, went and sold all that he had and bought it. Remember, this is, the, this is Jesus, by the way, talking. He's like, the kingdom of God is like a man searching for great pearls. <laughs> It's possible to say that what people are actually searching for throughout the many toes in this earth is simply the kingdom of God. Men through other religion, what they, because they're searching, they're seeking to understand this life, the meaning of this life, what, what we hear and all that stuff. They're seeking to have a relationship with this creator. They, they want a utopia where there's no um, war, there's no suffering, there's no all these things, there's no problems. They're seeking to, you know, many seeking for all these, these things. It's possible that this, this world that they're searching for is actually found in the kingdom of God. The Bible says the man was searching for it. When he found it, he sought all that he had. Why? Because the kingdom of God is an answer to all these problems in this world. It's the answer to all these things that we've been searching for. But the problem is a lot of people are searching for the kingdom of God and what they find is religion. They're searching for this supreme being. They're searching for this utopian world, this awesome world. But what they end up finding is religion. If you want your world to be perfect, if you want to not experience suffering, all that stuff, through rituals and all that stuff. <laughs> People are searching for the kingdom of God, but the problem is they don't get the kingdom of God. A lot of people, even believers, some of them don't even, have any, don't even know nothing about the kingdom of God. What they've been introduced to is religion. You want your sins to be forgiven? Okay. Pray to this person. Pray to this statue. Do this. You know, keep going to, <laughs> keep going to your pastor. Just keep depending on him. Don't, don't, you know, just be lazy. Don't pray. Don't fast. Nothing. Just keep on. You know, his, his prayers, no, no, that's it, that's it. Just keep on allowing to pray for you. That's why people are lazy. <laughs> oh, God. Because of time, I'm just going to wrap it up. I'll explain again. Religion is man's attempt to find meaning in his life. It's man's attempt to understand, basically, and to answer the question of why the world exists, why humans exist, what happens after life, after death, how can we escape things like suffering in this world, religions, men's attempt to um, search for a supreme being who may be defined as God, divinity, or something else, and religion is men's attempt to find a means of having an intimate relationship with this God. Religion, <clears throat> in most religions, is men's attempt to reach up to their God. The most profound thing is man is trying to reach up to God. But for us, it was God that actually reached down to us. Man wants to reach up to their God through different means, but our God is like, you can't, where I am is too far for you. You can't do that. So I'm going to incarnate, I'm going to actually come down to you so I can be with you, so you can have this intimate relationship you're actually seeking for. Praise the Lord. Amen. Yeah, yeah I just stopped there. <laughs> and I'll let Pastor yeah, complete. Put your hands together for our pastor. Praise the Lord. Yeah. Yeah.
Praise the name of Jesus. Are you blessed? Amen. Amen. Um, how many of you um, appreciate the gift of maybe like, um, you know, I was, I wish, one day I was with my other brother and I had a dream. I said, and in that dream I was climbing a ladder and I met two prime ministers. And each one of them, when I meet one at the ladder, I was so tempted because to follow them, you know? Yeah. <clears throat> I was so tempted. And uh, I didn't follow the first one. I kept on climbing. I met another prime minister. This one was more beautiful. I was so tempted, instead of climbing the ladder. And uh, I kept on climbing. I left that one. When I got move a bit, I had a voice that said, if you had followed them, if you had followed them, you would just be like them. But for the fact you kept on climbing, you shall be greater than all of them. That's when I came out, I said, I'm going to be advisor to 14 presidents. Advisor to 14 presidents. It's only a matter of time. It's only a matter of time. They start looking for me. Oh, you, are you sure you were in Malaysia for seven years? Really? You were, what was happening at that? What did you see about Malaysia? It has started. Are you sure, though you are in Canada or in Israel now, are you saying that you were in Australia? When children were born, half members of my family were born in Australia. Now, this was things I saw before 2003, before I left Nigeria. A lot of them are happening now. Why am I saying this? I see the greatness in this young man. Let me just put a question to you. When you which which church would you like to be going? The church you will just enter now. When you enter from morning from the beginning to the end. Let us pray. Every fire pursuing you, fire back, fire back. You see everybody will be sweating. La 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 la. The next now, now prayer for offering. They have prayer for everything. Prayer for let's come and every demonic power of harassing you on the west. Ma 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 ma. Yeah yeah yeah. I'm sure they also. When you go back, you know what he asked you? What did you learn today? Ha! Ah, it was powerful. Ma 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 ma. Say, I'm sure they Still listening. <laughs> what did you prayer to all everywhere was prayer scattering them. Yeah, 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 oh, ha, 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 My people are perish, not because of prayer, for lack of knowledge. I tell you this guy, where he's going? It's just if, like I listen to my messages, I've started putting his message on my YouTube. If you like, you go and listen. He will by himself. Learn by his mistakes, improve on it. First edition, second edition. If you keep on preaching like I've been preaching for about 26 years, when it gets to my level, you will see. Are you getting now? I see the, my children are very small, but I see the greatness in them. I see beyond. I see the greatness in this church. A lot of you will want to go to where you sweat. Ma, ma, ma. Now, but look at knowledge. 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 When you finish the church here, and you let's say by special grace, at least you got to it because there were so many things. This young man said, he had made a lot of sense. Religion is all about searching and seeking. So what's the proof that you are not a religious person? When you have found God. When you have not found God, you are still a religious person. When you go and our bishop asks you, what happened today? Oh, our bishop, it was what happened. <laughs> what did you learn? Bishop, I didn't know. But today I learned. That religion is searching. When we are still searching, it means even now, I'm not yet sure about God. It means I'm still a religious man. I 
I thought I've known God. I thought I've, I've, I've overgrown religion. What is religion? What is Christianity? Character of Christ. Christ life. It's not a religion. If you have not yet the Christ in your family, not yet the Christ in your community, you are still a religious person. That's the message. Five levels you will prove and know whether you're a religious person. Matthew chapter 7. We're not going there. We don't have time. From verse 7. Seek. I mean, ask, number one. That's how you know you have grown from I was a religious person, now I'm no more a religious person. Ask number one. Seek number two. When you overgrow asking, when you overgrow seeking, when you overgrow knocking, do you know the level now you go now? Whatever you want men see to you, whatever you want men to do to you, you start doing it to another person. Does that make sense? And verse 13 now says of that Matthew. He said, This thing I'm telling you to do is not easy. Straight is the way. It's not easy. What did the book of 1 Peter chapter 1, 4, verse 1 say? Peter, 1 Peter 4, 1. He said, When Christ was on earth, he suffered. And if you have decided in your life to suffer like Christ, you say you are both sin because the only thing the devil will want to use to cause you to sin is suffering. But if you make up your mind, if I tell you this, you will not believe it. Last week Sunday, when I finished dressing up, I was going to pick my key. I fainted, I fell on the floor. This part, I know, and you hit this place. I didn't know what happened to me. The only thing I had however I came back was when Fever was asking, Daddy, are you okay? Daddy, are you okay? God didn't make me. How many of us that have health insurance? What do I mean health insurance? You enter the hospital, they will treat you then you don't pay one cent. No extra cope. Do you know how many pastors, if this happened to we now call ambulance. My wife said, I have to call ambulance. Are you going to church? You're calling ambulance. Me going to church. I said, I have covenant of life with God. 14th of December, 2000. I can't die. No power can kill me. Have you not read the Bible? Paul said, I died day. Do you think he was joking? Yeah. You see, I had the sentence of death. But the next thing I saw, I came back to life. I don't know. I died. In my conflict. Doctors that I saw, I'm supposed to be the one laying hands on doctors. I'm supposed to be the one empowering doctors. I don't know whether that makes sense. It takes a man that has really found God, that knows his destiny. Remember the five questions. One, how did you start? The purpose. The destiny. How are you going to end? A man in my position, enjoying the, my beautiful wife, my relative. And the, I would have been rushing so that I would still be enjoying my beautiful wife. So that I would not die. But I told my wife, if I go to hospital now, that I'm supposed to go to church, the devil has gotten me. My ministry is dead. My life is dead. Have to go to church. In fact, with this that has happened, I'm going to pray for Australia. And it's not the normal boy just going and pray and come back. But this time around, we do our round. Let me see if I perish, I perish. How many of you would have done it? But those that know their God, they shall be strong and do exploit. Church, listen to me. God is real. You are done, you are still shaking. You are still afraid because you are still religious. Does that make sense? coming. My son, why is it that when you are speaking all this revelation, it's as if you are, it's because there's no works in it. <laughs> Jesus said, even if you don't believe what I'm saying, why not believe my works? So never, I'm sure to us. Mm. Remember, one of it is, if you have four members that are sick, mm. make sure at least two are here before you send the other one. That's works! 
That's helping you to get what? Does that make sense? The works. Oh my, you only know, my children only know my Australia. They don't know what God used us to do in Malaysia. They don't know anything. These are works speaking. Works. There are people that, that are, there are people that have lied against me in church of God mission that have said and they believed it, but now the people are covering their faces in shame. Why? My works that are speaking. Is it? Was it this? So, oh, if we have no Facebook, wouldn't have known the works of this man. They are covering themselves in shame because when it comes to anointing, when it comes to level of faith, they are not even up to my standards. Are you getting what I'm saying? I'm challenging you now. You, you have the message. You have gotten the message. Faith without work is dead. Add works, you will see the world will celebrate you. Don't just be a Christian, a religious person. Okay, you have already preached it. I'm a religious Christian. It means, who is a religious Christian? If you are being shaken by the things around you, sickness, this are, you have, it's hard, it's life. You are still religious. Are you getting now? Does that make sense? I just only came to add. Okay, now, let me ask this question now. You have heard about civilization in the world. You've heard about education. You've heard about all the good things. What do you really think that is what is holding this war? Do you think it's because civilization has been on or this? Can you share with me? It's, let's, let's do it within five, ten minutes. I want to bring your understanding to something. Yes. The answer. Yeah, we everybody, anybody has their thoughts. What do you really think that is holding this world? It might be that it's America. It might be that it's technology. It might be okay, they have satellite in the moon. What do you think that has been keeping this world from the world not closing? Now, don't forget that a lot of people has been fighting to destroy this world. A lot of people have been fighting to use chemical to this chemical uh, weapon to destroy. Nothing they ever, but they have not been able. Why do you think that this world is still existing? Why do you think that this world will still exist? Knowledge is power. What do you know? Positive things you know give you, but negative things you know will kill you. Because we choose some negative, when they come and they will say uh, to us, uh, this sickness is going to kill you. We believe it more than 2,000 years ago, this sickness has already been. It's not, you see, he took, he took. He took, he took. Has been taken out of me. But we believe that one. We don't even believe. I looked at my wife, I said, give me, if this thing repeat again, give me a few days. If this thing repeat again, then call ambulance. I'm above ambulance. I'm above sickness. It's not to post. Ask her what she saw last week and last two weeks. No woman will see it without, without she said, I'm going to call your brother and your sister and tell them that you're refusing to go to the hospital. I said, sweetheart, give me time. I have covenant with life. No death can kill me. No sickness can kill me. I'm above sickness. As soon as I'm talking, to, I'm talking now, she knows that it's a miracle. So what do you think that is holding all these things? Please, fast, fast, fast. So that we close. You see, the camera is doing so you want to close it. Your camera want to we say you should close, huh? <laughs> I think it's because of prayer and also the work of God because um the end time uh, when Jesus said I will come back, um God is a timing God and I believe that the time has not reached yet for the world to, to finish. Because you're a Christian, just that background you have. You got a Christian, that's why you know that's the answer. But I want us to come speak specific. I mean specific. Oh, it's because of the grace? Hmm? It's grace? It still is rigmarole with what mom says. I think you'd say um, God and his word. The word, God. the word of God. But you know many people, because they don't know God, they don't know this. Thing. They feel it's because America. You see the way when Iraq want to do something, America will go. When Africa, they want to They think that's what is keeping. Watch very soon, you will see America come down. Still, the world will be going. 
and you will be surprised to see another power. Trump came to show that the problem America has is not God. That the problem they have is them rejecting God. You will watch out what is going to happen. In the, uh, yes, sure. For the world to end? No, it's not the world to end. It's to tell you because people think it's America that is holding the world. People think it's civilization that is holding the world. People think that it's the uh, UK in their knowledge holding the world. It's a lie. You'll be surprised that the next superpower that will come out I come out like a foolish place like Africa. Go and write it down. It might not be China, it might not be all these things. It might not. To prove to you that is what is it? It's written 100%. Why I'm saying this? Some trust in chariots among their houses. What is your mind? What is it that you are holding on? You, you, okay, Australia, Australia um, uh, because I'm in Australia, because I'm an Australia, I'm safe. No, it's not Australia. Does that make sense? Yeah. Quickly, 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 let, let's close with this. Psalms 24, verse 1. And two. Come, uh, yeah. Psalms twenty-four. Yes, verse one and two. Yes. Um. Yes, yes, yes. Twenty-four. That's one. Right. The earth is the law. The earth is the law. And fullness of therefore. Whatever that is in need. The world and they that dwell with their the, the world and everything that is in it. The earth. No, no, no. What does that mean? What think about it? How did America start? The America that everybody is depending on, okay, like now we want to uh, Biafra, we want to get up. All we are praying is for Trump to say, give them Biafra. Because we trust in America. It's okay. Does that make sense? We trust in civilization. Am I making sense? What I'm trying to say in first, please refocus your strength and confidence on the word of God and not on what you think you have. Look at me. There's no way somebody from my background would have been where I am today. But do you know how I'll be flying? I'm holding on to the word of God. The earth and the fullness thereof is the law. He cannot allow anybody to just wake up and destroy the world he created. He cannot allow any human permit for some time. The same way he did is, you know, can you continue? See verse 2. What did the verse 2 say? Um, for he has founded it upon the sea. He has founded it upon the waters, upon the sea. And established it upon the floors. Are you getting it now? Yes. Yeah. Mm. This world is standing on the word of God. So, what, what is the thing that will destroy this world? Yeah? What is the thing that will destroy this world? Now look at it. It's the word of God. I think it's in... Can you get... Um, John. John 12. 44 and 48. Is it? 44. 48, let me see. <clears throat> oh, 44. No, no, 47. Did I say 44? Yeah. Oh, 47 and 48. And if any man hear my words. If any man hear my words. And believe not. And believe not. I judge him not. I don't judge him. For I came not to judge him. I didn't come to judge him. But to save the world. But to save the world. He that rejected me. He had that have rejected me. And received not my words. And received not my word. I have one that judged him. I have the one that judged him, which is what? The word that I have spoken, the same shall judge him in the last days. So what is he judging us? Forget about it. It's the word of God. If you don't have the word of God, you don't have knowledge of the word of God, I'm telling you, 
to bear. No matter what you trust in, you are condemned. For God so loved the world. It's a popular scripture. 316. That he sent for his only God, that whoever believes in him, or anyone that does not. Are you, do you understand what I'm saying? How many of you are depending or thinking that because I'm in Australia, I'm safe? Is wrong thought. If you are thinking like that, or you are still thinking you are religious, <laughs> <laughs> you are very religious. You understand? But if you know, and you know like me, that I know, I know, it doesn't matter where I'm going. The only prison you can put me in what? To close my tongue. <laughs> if you handcuff me and lecture me and put me in prison, I'm not in prison. Because the power of life and death is in the tongue. How do you understand? Do you think I have cemented the kind of garnish this message yeah. that you had? Who are you as a believer? Are you a believer that believes that because I'm saved, you are religious? But if you are a believer that saved Christ in me, the hope of glory, church, let's stand up. I just begin to give God thanks. We are some thrusts in chariots and some on the horses. But we will remember the name of the Lord. It's not by might, not by power, but by the spirit of the living God. It's not of him that will it or him that run it. Showed mercy. I'm alive because of the word of God. I am strong because of the word of God. I am healthy because of the word of God. I am unmovable because of the word of God. I am unstoppable because open your mouth and begin to thank God for the word of God. Not because of Australia, not because of America, not because of civilization, but because the word of God is powerful. Tell me whom you trust. Tell me where you have put your trust in. And I'll tell you how far you go in life. If it is the word of God that you have put your trust in, I'm here to congratulate you. You will live forever, ever, and ever. And no good things that is of this earth. You say 100% on it. 100% in heaven. I'm telling you, leave all those things, all those things you are trusting, they will fail you in the name of 